Welcome to 52 Miniatures. My name's Alex, and today I'll be sharing my favorite paints. I recently saw a video by Scott uh, Miniac sharing his favorite paints, um, in turn um, inspired by a video by John, Ninjan, from, you know, when he shared his favorite paints. And I figured this is a great thing because I kind of feel that paints are in a way a bit shrouded in mystery. There's, there's like secret knowledge. Um, my hope is that the more people that share their favorite paints, the more we will see that everyone just uses different paints for different reasons. And it's all down to individual painting style and just, you know, how you like your paints to work on your miniature. Hi, I smell, I smell a thief, thief in the night. And so please, if you're watching this, share what your favorite paints are in the description with your friends. If you've got a, you know, YouTube channel, maybe you could make a similar video. So let's get started. Anthracite Grey. This is one of two scale 75 paints uh, that I've actually had to buy a second bottle of. There's something about this shade of blue-grey that works really well uh, on my... Well, I don't really do, uh, you know, non-metallic metal, but I kind of do... Um, if it looks cool, uh, then we can call it non-metallic metal. <laughs> but, you know, steel, uh, armour, that kind of things. Honestly, I use it for so many things uh, that I kind of lose count. I painted an entire army, an entire Stormcast army, uh, based on this colour. That's how much I like it. Morning Sky, uh, a Chimera paint, but it's um, actually a mixed paint. Chimera is known for having a range of single pigment paints, but they also have small sort of signature series where some uh, chosen painters have, uh, you know, mixed their favorite blends. Uh, this is by uh, Michael Pizarski, and it's a uh, kind of similar color. <laughs> to the anthracite grey, uh, only it's not blue, it's green. It's one of those shades I've never been able to mix myself, kind of, but it's the perfect just shadow feel, you know, when you, when you just want something to feel like it's in shadow, um, but you still want it to have like a intense kind of a colour, then this just works great. I think I have a problem with green, and this is as close to green as I'm kind of comfortable. Um, and I just love how this works out on, on tons of my paint jobs. Kalahari orange, also scale 75. Let's, uh, well, it's, you know, it's a nice orange. Um, I do tons of, kind of looks cool, but it's not really non-metallic metal copper um, using this paint. Um, it's just also a great place to start when painting orange. Um, and, you know, sort of a space sci-fi kind of orange start here, work your way up. Um, it's great for mixing in with browns to sort of highlight and browns. It's great for tons of things. Um, but I'd like to talk a little bit. You, you'll be noticing that I'm using quite a lot of scale 75 paints. And I want to mention this. We're kind of roughly just starting here. But scale 75 is, is known uh, for being of a rather good quality, also because they're very matte. They have a matte finish, and so does um, Chimera, if you shake them well enough. Different finishes on different paints is not only about the shine, you know, how you can like a model because it looks kind of matte, or you can like a model because it looks kind of satin. It's also kind of affects um, how the next layer of paint acts on top of that surface. So if you have a um, matte finish, which really suits my sort of style of painting, I find it easier to be more precise with the next layer when it comes to sort of um, textures and brush strokes. But it's more difficult to make a smooth sort of glazed gradient. So a glaze is when you thin a paint down a lot and maybe just try and uh, shade something down just a little bit and make some gradients using some water and you know and that's a lot easier to do on a surface that is more satin or glossy because yeah, you know this and the same goes for using washes a wash will flow out better on like a satin or glossy finish than it will on a matte finish so that's something to think about maybe um, 
that when people talk about matte paints or satin paints or glossy paints, there's even glossy paints, it doesn't just affect how things look in the end. It actually affects how the different layers of paint interact with each other. A very close contender to this Kalahari orange is Pro Acryl's Burnt Orange, which is, I think, one of my favorite rust colors. I love using a sponge to sort of sponge on uh, rust stains and stuff like that. And this is like the perfect rust color. They're very, very similar. And you'll find this a lot of times with paints is that even though it's excessively kind of close in hue, uh, the Kalahari orange, for some reason, in my mind, resembles something more like copper or stone, or as it says, uh, desert. Whereas the burnt orange, uh, to me, kind of just resembles industrial rust. The Pro Acryl paints and the Scale 75 paints are pretty different consistencies. The Scale 75 paints are pretty uh, thick and gooey, and I like that because um, I wet blend a lot, a technique that sort of benefits from a, a bit of a thicker paint, whereas uh, the Pro Acryl is very sort of smooth and flows uh, very nice. For me, that makes it difficult to wet blend with, but uh, it's a lot easier to get sort of a smooth covering layer of it, this, this stuff than it is of this stuff. This is also something to take into account when um, people talk about their favorite paints. It's not only about the color, it's... Um, how the paint is applied, which, you know, is not only based on what technique the painter likes to paint, um, but what purpose they use that specific paint for. This is my favorite brown, uh, Dunkelbraun, which is a dark brown. Uh, in German, I guess, it makes it more sound like it's, you know, a, a war paint, which this is called Warfront, the brand, but it's actually made by Scale Color, which is the same people that make Scale 75. Only the consistencies and, and how these paints sort of work on the brush is, is very different. This, by the way, this brown is, I don't know, it's, I, it just works for everything. I don't know why I like it. I just think it's great. It's a bit cool, as in uh, cold, as in maybe there's some violet or purple in it or something like that. Um, it's not towards the yellow side, it's towards the cooler side. It's just a shade of brown that I adore. And while we're on that subject, here's a paint that I use a lot, which is called African Shadow uh, by Scale 75. I don't think I have painted uh, a Caucasian face um, or even a dark-skinned face without using this very thinned down, um, sort of, you know, around the edges that will be touching the hair. It's a sort of dark red, purplish, brownish, color that is just great to use as an asset while painting faces. And there's another reason for um, different paint brands. Some paint brands really uh, take to getting watered down. You know, if you're going to use something really thin down, people talk about glazing or even you thin it down even more and you can tint things. Some paint just breaks up as the, the qualities or the way the paint is made does, just doesn't handle that much water. Whereas some brands um, are really good at getting thinned down. Scale 75, for, for example, is one of those uh, brands where you can just thin it down into obscurity, but it still sort of feels like you're using a paint. I'll have to admit that this has uh, recently been kind of a little bit replaced by a combination uh, of these two paints, which is um, so flat paints from Golden, which is uh, artist paints. Uh, they're red oxide and red violet yeah, kind of takes me into the same territory. Next up is Stone Grey uh, by Vallejo uh, model color. And um, this is another one of those paints that there's not much left in this bottle. I, I use it uh, a lot, uh, not only for grey stones, because um, it's sort of like a khaki color, but it complements things very well, even if it's sort of a warm scheme or a cold scheme. It's a great sort of undead paint. Um, it is great for bone, you know, skeletons, um, tinted, and it's great skin tone for something like a vampire um, or a zombie um, or even something like, you know, them scary dark elves and stuff like that. Lovely paint. And now let's talk about this week's sponsor. Don't you just hate it when, you know, everyone else has a 3D printer, uh, but you don't? Because you can't. 
really. You live in an apartment, there's no spare room, there's no basement, uh, there's no garage, or it's just not something that you're interested in, you know, learning the whole thing of resin and settings and all of that. That's why what I'm holding in my hand is a very exciting thing. This is from Only Games. This is actually a blister pack um, with a 3D printed miniature made on demand by Only Games. Only Games is part of the My Mini Factory. I don't know if you've heard about My Mini Factory, but essentially, if you're after a place to find 3D files, STL files to print on your 3D printer, where you go is My Mini Factory. Only Games has been going for only about a year, but I mean, the idea is if you go into My Mini Factory and you see something that you like, and instead of just buying the STL to you know print on your own 3D printer, you go to Only Games and you order that miniature and you get it physically shipped to you. This is such a cool thing because there's so many great sculpts out there that are sculpted by indie artists. And, you know, the requirement to get your hands on that is either to, you know, have your own 3D printer or like have a friend that can print it to you or something like that. And this just opens up the world of 3D printing to everyone. And so essentially an indie designer uploads their design to only games and you can go in and you can order from one to 20 thousand and they'll ship it to you anywhere in the world and as of september 2022 only games can also offer high quality full color manufacturing for indie 3d creators that design in color only games has a lead time of under five days from order to completed production designers can choose to customize their packaging to build brand continuity and further tell the story of their creations Creators retain 90% of the revenue from their sales minus a manufacturing fee. This is a great thing, you know, for you to get your hands on the miniatures that maybe was not possible without the 3D printer, but it's also great for indie creators to maybe be able to reach a wider audience. In the description, there's a link uh, that's a specific 52 miniatures link that will give you 15% off uh, if you buy anything from Only Games uh, using that link. Please go check out Only Games and now back to all the paint. Another Chimera paint, this time one of the single pigment ones, and this is magenta. And um, mainly for the fact that we don't really get all that many magenta paints. Um, usually they're red. And magenta is a red, but it's also kind of a pink and a purple and a, I don't know, it's magenta. And I love to use this for mixing in two other paints on the palette. So you could almost say it's a bit of a, a technical paint. I don't often paint using this just as it is because I don't paint all that many magenta things. Um, but using this to mix with other paints instead of a red all of a sudden opens up a, a radically different palette. And that sounded maybe a little bit scary, but I think the point of many of my paints here so far is that they're sort of go-to paints. I know that if I'm going to be painting sort of something that I want to look like uh, steel or metal or non-metallic, you know, that I'll just I'll go for this one. Uh, if I want just a cool shade to whatever, I'll just grab that one. If I want to do rust, I'll just grab that one. Obviously, all these could be mixed um, from single pigment paints. No one needs all these paints. But the point here is to show what I use every day. And some days, sure, I'll have not as many paints on my palette and I'll, uh, you know, for me, uh, still learning a lot uh, as a challenge, we'll try and mix paints. Like instead of using this, I'll try and use these two and maybe some black or whatever it is to achieve that. But some days, and there's a lot of them, I just really just want this brown. That combined with what I talked about earlier, the specific uh, properties of a paint. Like I just know that this burnt orange from Proacryl will work really well while I sponge it on and do rust stains. Next paint, which is actually kind of close to this uh, uh, stone gray. Um, it's called Mojave White. It's a bit brighter, but it's very, very, very close. The reason why I wanted to pop that out there again is to, you know, I use them in different ways because they're from two different brands. I can't always explain why I like one better than the other. I might have both of them on my palette. Um, and when I paint, they just it just flows off the brush in different ways. When people recommend a paint and say, 
this is the only paint you need, this is the best paint, this is the review of the latest paints. Have in mind that it might actually not work for you because you don't paint in the same style as uh, whoever's recommending the paint. And that's the main reason why I want to do a video like this and hope that more will do videos like this or just, you know, in general talk about paint is because the, the vast array of paint is very reflective of the vast array of painters and painting styles. And the only way you can find the paint that is good for you at the moment is to try different styles of paint. And so I'd say a great thing to do is find a well-stocked game store and uh, see if you can buy paints from some different ranges and just experiment with, you know, what is this stuff in the bottle and does it affect how I paint? Here's a strange one. Livery green was the original form. It has now been replaced uh, by yellow green from Soflat. I have no idea why I use these paints as much as I do, but I do. I don't even really know what I do with them. Um, it just sort of, all of a sudden they're on my palette and I use them for tons of things. It just mixed in with other paints and magic things happen. Um, this is gonna be the worst sort of recommendation for a paint um, because, I mean, I could say, yes, I've used it to sort of uh, add to another green to highlight the green, but it's just been used for so much more than that in lots of other different paints. And I don't know why I think it works so well. It just kind of does. Um, so there we are. This time it's actually about the color and not uh, paint brand. This is a uh, red iron oxide and yellow iron oxide, uh, or is it just called yellow oxide and red oxide? There's something about these two paints that I think is utterly fantastic. Uh, for me personally, this is where I started to learn how to sort of blend and mix my own paints is by having these two uh, sort of on the palette and mixing them into other paints. I guess we could say it's a red and a yellow. They're just more muted and I have a more muted, you know, palette usually when I paint. Um, but it's a great and fun way to try and sort of mix your own skin tone, mixing these two with some white and some blue, for example. Um, it's just great to use as a base for trying to do something like non-metallic metal gold or non-metallic metal copper. They're just two great paints to have around and to build off of. Uh, they're, they're, they're just very natural paints. And so this is this can be rust, this can be brick, um, I mean, on its own. Uh, this could be sand, this could be sort of khaki, this could be uh, peanut butter. <sighs> but yeah. And that's regardless of brand. That's just that, you know, these specific pigments, uh, red oxide and yellow oxide, are just really great to have handy, I'd say. Now we're going to get into a bit more of sort of sp uh, specialist uh, paints. I'm going to have to divide the C here. Lo and behold, a wash from uh, Games Workshop. This is the old formula. I, I believe by now they have a new formula. Uh, this is the only wash from Games Workshop I reoccurringly use um, and for a very specific thing. That's why I thought it'd be fun to share it. You know when you try and paint an eye or when I try and paint an eye um, for various reasons it always sort of goes wrong uh, and so one has to do it tons of times and then eventually it sort of kind of maybe looks like the miniature is sort of half squinting you know and you know yeah it's just the way of miniature painting uh, but I have a tendency to always use this a little bit watered down when painting eyes because I do the black first and then I do the white and then I put a little bit of this in just to get that sort of I don't know it's sort of because it's a wash it ends up more um, around the eye and it sort of divides things well and there's that slight sort of pinkish hue uh, of a red eye which I kind of uh, like uh, in my miniatures because it sort of makes them look like they don't really feel all that well which I wouldn't do either if I was on a battlefield which is usually where my miniatures are.
Moonray Flesh, uh, a fantasy and game range. It's also made by uh, Scale Color. I use this paint to highlight or to brighten other paints with. So I say if I have a purple and I want to have a brighter purple for highlights, I add this instead of a white. And when that doesn't work, I, I use this, which is Tenier Yellow uh, from Scale 75. Um, which is just a very sort of pale yellow. And so these are sort of, I guess, technical paints. I don't use them on their own very much. Well, I do actually use this skin tone. Uh, I, I just love it as a pale skin tone. Um, but mainly I use it to dilute other paints. Um, and you probably see this with quite a lot of people that paint, is that they they find sort of a, a, a pale yellow, maybe an icy blue um to highlight uh, or brighten paint in different sort of regions of the color wheel. The same goes for the other direction, which is this is Payne's Gray, uh, so flats, uh, golden so flat paints, Payne's Gray, uh, which is a great paint to use to darken uh, paints with. It's a very, very, very dark blue, like indigo style thing. And so this is, this is I guess, uh, kind of technical not used by me very often on their own, uh, but used uh, to sort of dilute paints that I already have on the palette and I want it to be either darker or brighter. But instead of using black or white, we use these type of paints. Before we get into uh, the blacks and the whites, uh, we're gonna do my overall, in general, absolute favorite paint. And I don't know why, but it's Purple Madder and it's an oil paint. It's the first oil paint we can see. Um, and I actually use oil paints a lot. Um, and I haven't really been recommending all that many of them, basically because I don't want to scare you too much. <laughs> but I don't know what's up with this specific shade. This is about the specific pigment and shade. Uh, there's actually two pigments in here, I think. There's just something about this color that I love and I've used it on uh, skin, I've used it on undead things, things that's supposed to look sort of um, nasty, but it's also something in this specific shade that makes me think of like medieval paintings, real old school paintings. Uh, it's got like a just a character and a there's something to it. I don't know what it is. I just it's just my favorite color. This is my favorite color. Now I've said it, this is my favorite color. And uh, that's just the main reason why I'll recommend it. It's utterly personal. And I haven't really found this exact sort of color in an acrylic paint. So uh, that's why I got the oil paint up here. While on the subject of oil paints, which is just, again, more of a uh, specialist thing as with the previously shown Games Workshop wash, here is an oil wash. It's a pre-mixed oil wash by Soilworks, which is also scale colors uh, paints. It's dark mud. And if you're going to start out in sort of the world of oil paints and you don't really know where to go, uh, usually starting out trying to make your own washes is, is a good way. Um, you could also just start using some pre-made washes. And I use this one all the time for staining just making things look grungy and dirty and like they've been to war, which again is usually what most of our ministers, you know, that's their job. It's a perfect mix for just dark dirt and uh, I love it for it. My recommendation for white paints is entirely based on technique. So what I mean by that is, um, a white that I use a lot is the fantasy and game white. This is really thin and sort of watery, which means that I can paint it, I can sort of highlight things and it doesn't go like super white. And so edge highlighting something that is, you know, purple with this white, because it's kind of semi-transparent, leaves me with just sort of a very pale purple highlight. Um, and so I use it a lot just for that reason. It's just how it flows off the brush, how easy it is to handle on the miniature. And, and the fact that it's actually pretty transparent. Secondly is a weird paint, which is a uh, liquid pigment from 
uh, green stuff world, which is called white dust. And for some reason, I just love dry brushing with this. I don't know why. I think it works better than any other paint um, because it's very liquidy. And so if one have, has one of those big, you know, makeup brushes um, to do dry brushing with, um, you really need to just make sure it's not too wet. But once I start working with this, I don't know why. I just think it works really, really well. And then we got this uh, paint, which is the artist range from Scale Color. So it's it's an artist paint, which means kind of like it's in a tube and not a bottle, which means it doesn't have as many sort of gooey, flowy uh, mediums in it. Um, and that's why I like it. I use this mixed in with other colors as my sort of final highlights because I just, again, kind of like this, but it's just a different style. There's something about this which makes things really nice and flowy. And there's something about this that makes things not flow at all. Uh, and so if maybe I stipple, which is, you know, you make small little dots and you don't want the paint to sort of go everywhere, um, but I might use this more. And if I just want something to be really sort of flowy, I use this. Is that explained well? I'm not sure. Uh, but totally different experiences, all three of them, uh, still white. Same goes for the black. I very rarely use black, apart from like when I mix colors on the palette. And honestly, kind of any black would do. With me, the black is more about the shine uh, than, than, you know, I don't really have a favorite black, um, apart from Black Templar contrast paint. I use this on pretty much any miniature mixed with contrast medium, uh, sort of as a wash to tone things down. Um, I also use black oil paint to make my own washes. Uh, similarly, um, as with the contrast paint, only when I feel like using an oil paint instead. And black smoke pigment. So it's a black dry pigment. This is kind of specific, but you know, if you have a miniature on a base and in theory, there should be a shadow right under the miniature because, you know, they're standing out on a battlefield. And so if the space on the base between their legs is painted as brightly as the rest of the base, that's a bit weird because there should be a shadow there. For that, I just take a little amount of this on the brush and just rub it in just right under the miniature and it just darkens the entire thing down a little bit and things just look great. In between this white and this black, there is obviously gray. This is my favorite gray because it's as close to a sort of in the middle neutral gray that I've found. Um, I'm sure there's others, but this is my favorite. It's called graphite and it's a scale 75 paint. So for me, essentially that's in the middle. If black is, no, wait, we've got white. Okay, white is over here, black is over there. This is the gray that's in the middle. And so I can just start there. And if I want to go darker, I can darken this down, maybe with some Payne's gray. And if I want to brighten it, depending if I want it sort of a cool uh, highlight, I can use sort of a, an icy sort of uh, blue or a warmer highlight. And it's perfect. It's the middle ground. Okay, we need to part the sea here again. I don't use metallic paints much. Um, I don't oftenly appreciate what, how sort of that shine that is from real metallics. Um, it's just a personal thing. When I do paint metallics, I very much appreciate these sort of metal colors, airbrush colors from uh, Vallejo. This is, this is just the silver. I have plenty more. I just want to sort of say that, you know, if I paint with metallic paints, this is usually what I use, unless I want to paint gold. And then I use uh, this uh, dry pigment stuff from, from Green Stuff World. It's just fabulous gold. There's another one. This is antique gold. There's another gold. Um, usually, you know, I use that mixed with one of these, but the gold ones. 
but this is if I have you know but I'm 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 very not much the expert on metallic paints because I don't really enjoy using them but if I do this is what I use and finally we should uh, end with maybe where I should have started this is actually not the right can <laughs> because I just run out of the right can this is supposed to be dark gray uh, Vallejo rattle can primer uh, or just paint the dark gray Rattle can from Vallejo is like the ultimate gray, dark gray. It just works with everything. It's sort of uh, cool, a little bit green. Uh, it's warm. It's, I don't know. It's just, it's all over the place in a great way. And it can be used for so many things because it just feels like it's adaptable. As soon as you spray it on, you immediately think um, a bit sort of um, modern warfare gray but i've used it on so many things and it's just a great great color and so i just couldn't not put it in this video um, only this is actually the light gray but pretend that this is the dark gray and then the primer that i use for everything through my airbrush uh, pro acryls black primer it just shoots really well through the airbrush um, and it has a lovely sort of matte finish once dry um, and I couldn't recommend this more. I've tried a lot of black primers th through the airbrush and this is definitely my favorite. So my sort of deeper goal here is is hopefully maybe not to make you go buy all these paints. Instead maybe check out uh, Miniac's video and, and Ninjan's video and hopefully in the future other people's videos and talk to your friends and maybe realize that you can just take recommendations from all of us as long as it suits how you paint or how you think you paint or what you think you would benefit from and bear in mind that all different paint ranges uh, have different consistencies, they have different shines, they have, you know, uh, different amounts of pigment in them and how they dilute, how they don't dilute. And I think this is one of the major reasons, the combination of color, quality of pigment, how the paint works on the brush, depending on what stage one is in on the paint job, um, is what affects people's recommendations and that is an utterly personal experience because we all paint different obviously there will always be some great tips like you know darken a paint with paint gray and you know usually that works out all right you'll always get that kind of tips but hopefully i mean if, if we have a look here uh, for one thing you'll see that you know yeah there's not very many contrast paints so that says something about me but if we look at all these paints, uh, that says something about me as well. This is not the most colorful, you know. Of worlds. And so my recommendation, you know, there's no fluorescent things here. There's no bright pinks. There's no, this says a lot about me as a painter. Uh, when it comes to color choice. And so that's a good thing to bear in mind as well, that all of these recommendations are utterly personal and there's no one out there that can tell you that one paint is better than the other paint. Uh, they can only tell you why they experience the paint to be better than another. And it's a great fun journey to just try different paints and see how they work for you and what works for you because it's sort of a part of the journey of maybe finding your own technique as a painter because you know the most important thing we use is you know the brush and the paint and then the miniature that's all we got i hope you liked this video i know it's a bit different um i haven't scripted this one it was more sort of me rambling um at you in the camera i just wanted to see what happened when you know i just had my favorite paint in my hand and, and my own sort of first reactions uh, trying to explain why I liked the paint. But it was really fun to share my favorite paints with you and let's see what happens in maybe two years uh, if the same paints are still on the table or if things have drastically changed. Thanks for watching. Bye.